Hello everyone! Welcome to a video about the way that braces work. In this video I will be answering the age-old question, how do teeth actually move? When I first started my orthodontic treatment, I did not give a lot of thought to the way that teeth moved. I just thought you apply force to them and then they start moving. But how exactly does that happen? So if we relate this thing back to our day-to-day -day lives, we know that if you apply force to something, let's say a couch, it will move in the direction that you're applying force to, provided there are no obstacles in its way. But that doesn't really make a lot of sense for teeth, does it? Because there are a lot of obstacles in the way, meaning that our teeth are anchored in the bone. So you're pushing this tooth that is still anchored in the bone, where is it supposed to move? Like this does not make sense. But then again, when it comes to teeth, they actually need to be set in bone because otherwise they would be really wobbly and they couldn't withstand the forces of mastication. And that would mean that they would not be able to fulfill their main function, which is to help us chew our food. So what you want to do during an orthodontic treatment is take a tooth that is anchored in bone and you want to move it to a new direction, all the while maintaining its steadiness. Now, isn't that a bit of a paradox? The answer to that apparent paradox is the refined way in which nature has made us. Our teeth are actually not set in bone the way they would be set in stone, fortunately that is. Rather, our teeth are part of a complex masticatory system that is dynamic rather than static. So in order for teeth to move during the orthodontic treatment, they need to abide by two principles. They need to have slight force applied to them and that force needs to be constant. So let's take a look at how the magic happens. And we'll use this tooth as an example. You can see the tooth is inserted into the bone, but what actually anchors and suspends the tooth in the bone is a thin blanket of connective tissue called the periodontal ligament or PDL. The PDL has a multitude of crisscrossing ligaments that act as a suspension system, helping to absorb the shock and force of biting and chewing for the protection of the more fragile bone surrounding it. So basically, this periodontal ligament is like a hammock, allowing the tooth some movement in its socket. This is an important adjustment that prevents injury when you bite down, for example, on your fork. But we're talking about minimal movement here, cushioning the stress of mastication. Now, unlike that, what your orthodontist wants to induce is significant shifting, which is also permanent in nature, and the periodontal ligament mediates that as well. The periodontal ligament is very dynamic and it is the part of our body which senses the mechanical strain placed by the braces on the tooth and then converts it into a molecular biological response that then leads to the subsequent remodeling of the supportive tissues. So let us see how that happens. Suppose your braces are applying force on your tooth in the direction shown by this red arrow. Notice that the periodontal ligament will be squeezed in the direction that the tooth is moving towards, and that is what is called the pressure side. On the opposite side, the PDL is pulled on what is called the tension side. Let us focus for now on what happens on the pressure side. As the force of the braces compresses the PDL, a biochemical reaction occurs which transforms bone cells, also called osteocytes, into bone removing cells called osteoclasts. These osteoclasts proceed to remove bone on the pressure side and the tooth moves in that direction. At the same time as this is happening, switching to the tension side, the PDL signals osteocytes or bone cells to transform into osteoblasts or bone forming cells that start depositing bone behind the tooth, thus fixing the tooth into its new shifted position. So our teeth move through bone attrition and bone addition in a complex physical, biochemical and cellular process. Isn't that so cool? I was absolutely fascinated when I first learned how our teeth move by literally deconstructing and reconstructing our bodies. But after getting an idea about how this complex process functions, we're still left with one big question. So if the tooth is set in bone at its new correct position, how is it that patients experience relapse upon the completion of their orthodontic treatment? 
Now, if you've never heard before that teeth tend to move back to their initial positions once braces are removed, I'm so sorry for bringing you the bad news. As a matter of fact, a brutally honest orthodontist will tell you that when it comes to relapse, the question is not if it will happen, but rather when it will happen. And of course, you are supposed to wear contention devices once your orthodontic treatment is completed, but unfortunately, those contention devices are only able to delay the relapse and they're not able to completely prevent it. And yes, that does mean that you're investing thousands of dollars into a result that may not be very stable for you. And believe me, I'm not happy about that either because I'm obviously in the same boat as everybody else. As you see, I'm wearing braces and I have to wonder how stable will the results be that I will get from this treatment. That being said, if you follow the advice of your orthodontist faithfully during the contention phase, you're probably going to end up with pretty stable results and even if noticeable relapse does happen, it is rarely as severe as the initial situation was before braces. And returning to the question that I posed earlier, the short answer would be that relapse happens following the exact same two principles that the orthodontist harnesses in order to straighten your teeth in the first place. And those would be the application of slight but constant force. So see, your teeth do not know nor do they care where the force that they are experiencing is coming from. So they will react in the exact same way to the controlled force applied by your braces as they will to some random force applied by your teeth namely by moving in the direction of that force. And this is a process that continues throughout your life. As a matter of fact, one of the main objectives of an orthodontic treatment is to detect and neutralize all the forces that are acting upon your teeth. But sometimes it happens that some forces go undetected or they cannot be neutralized. And even if we're talking about seemingly harmless forces, such as those applied by your tongue or by your lips, those are more than enough to cause your teeth to shift back. But actually, the worst offenders when it comes to relapse are bite problems. And that's why it's so important to prioritize solving those bite problems during the orthodontic treatment in order to enjoy a better stability of the results. So that means that we should not allow ourselves to be seduced by a smile with seemingly perfectly aligned teeth and we should always insist that the underlying medical problems, which are the occlusal problems, be solved before those braces come off. Because otherwise we've just wasted thousands of dollars on a treatment that will only give us a seemingly perfect smile for a very limited period of time. That being said, there is such a thing as secondary crowding, which is the crowding of the teeth at an adult age once growth has stopped and the sad reality about that is that it happens regardless of whether you had your wisdom teeth extracted, regardless of whether you had extractions of any kind, and regardless of whether you had orthodontic treatment or not. Since it affects most heavily the lower anterior teeth, it is worth noticing their position through life, and if you see them shifting, it is wise to go to your orthodontist sooner rather than later. The thing is that the very same principles that allow our teeth to be aligned at any age are the same ones that endanger those hard-won results. Stability for life when it comes to teeth is more of a myth and a wish than it is a reality and that is just life. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you have, please give me a quick thumbs up, leave me a comment, share it with your friends and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Have a fantastic rest of the day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!